A very good evening and a warm welcome to another episode of Law and & Order. And you and I live in a world which is becoming highly commercialized day by day. And every day we directly or indirectly become a part of the corporate system. Companies, sole proprietorships, partnerships, carry on businesses and we tend to engage with them in our day to day lives. And often different legal principles affect the functioning of these companies and how it has a relationship with us individually. So today we are going to talk about the law relating to companies in Sri Lanka and we are happy to welcome Mr. Nishant Premati Ratna, attorney at law to um, Channel I Studio. Uh, he is um, the regional representative of the International Chamber of Commerce and also a council member of the University of Kalanya. A very warm welcome, sir. Thank you very much, Shahara. Thank you. It's uh, great to be back on Law and Order. And uh, just to begin today's program, I'll just put out a very open question to you. In Sri Lanka, we have many types of companies and uh, different legal principles affect them and uh, different privileges are there for a company when it's registered. What is a company in legal terms and how, what rights and liabilities does a company have? So, Shahara, you get in law two types of personalities. One is a natural person and the other is a juristic person. So, a juristic person is an artificial creation of an entity. So, an artificial creation of an entity is required for the purposes of continuity and for the purposes of also uh, institution of action and also uh, uh, maintaining certain uh, agreements, you need a person which is uh, not a legal entity. So a company which uh, is incorporated under the Companies Act is also a form of a juristic person. So the law governing companies in Sri Lanka is the Companies Act of 2007, Act Number 7. So that act which encompasses about 529 sections uh, sets out from the time of selecting a name until the time the company is incorporated and then thereafter the continuity of the company along with the personalities and the stakeholders which drive a company forward which include directors, shareholders, auditors and also even creditors who have to deal with the company. And uh, uh, the Companies Act has also very clearly set out certain situations which the company might have to go into in a case of insolvency, in the case of um, a difficulty of finances where it might require a merger, it might require a, a liquidator to be appointed uh, in the instance of the company uh, being required to be wound up. So I say from the birth to the life and the death of a company, there is a set of rules which is called the Companies Act of 2007. So answering your question, what is the, uh, what are rights uh, accrued to a company? Well, the companies also in law, it is recognized to have the same uh, 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 legal rights as a natural person in respect of certain aspects. So uh, contractually or even an FR case can be even preferred by a company in respect of certain matters which the company can be uh, uh, unfairly treated or prejudiced uh, and uh, uh, the Supreme Court has entertained matters of that nature. And also um, in Sri Lanka we, uh, what we see is rather than having very formal companies, a lot of businesses are carried out as um, self-employment uh, ventures such as a sole proprietorship or a partnership. Is it a different um, aspect from a company and what uh, rights does a sole proprietorship or a partnership have in comparison to a company? Because we don't see companies being formed all the time. Sometimes, for an example, a small uh, boutique shop on the side of the road would not technically be a company. What standing do they have in the face of law? So now, this will all depend on how you want to do your business, what business you want to do, and the complexity of the arrangement between the parties. Now, for example, Shahara, you and myself, if we want to start uh, a trading um, shop outside uh, Bauda Loka Mavata, we want to sell bicycles, for example, uh, Bianchi bicycles, uh, we, uh, we, we can 
combine our names and call it Nishan and Shehara traders and we can be selling bicycles. So, both of us are engaged in harmony in a form of a partnership. So, now that might not require a formation of a separate legal entity. So, you and me are equally liable in respect of the trading shop which we are now continuing. So, if there is an action instituted against Nishan and Shehara traders, both of us will have to be named in person because the partnership in law is not a legal entity or a juristic person. But now, what makes it easy for us to do our business? The formalities which are required in continuing a company is not required for an arrangement of this nature, where we, we can either have a partnership agreement and for our name, which is uh, uh, Shahara and Nishar traders, we might have to go and get a business registration, which we can do. We will get the business registration from the provincial authority and that we get the permission to continue and engage in our business under our trading name. So, that is a relationship between two natural people, but the natural people, the liabilities of the partnership is extended into the personal assets of the partners. There is no limitation of liability. So, suddenly we say there is a bicycle which we have sold and for whatever reason the bicycle breaks down on the middle of the road and causes serious injury to one of our customers. So, now the customer has to be admitted and then there is permanent disability and the hospital bills tantamount to about 15 million rupees. Now, if it is a company, the beauty about it is any damages suit would be limited to the liabilities of the company. But, however, in this instance, you and me can be both named as defendants in a damages action. So, both of us might have to pocket out from our personal proceeds, which are independent to that of our partnership in order to settle a claim if the plaintiff manages to win the action. So, the legal limitation of liability is not seen in a partnership. Then your question on a sole proprietorship. So, a sole proprietorship also the same principles of a partnership would arise. Uh, the sole proprietor who would be carrying on the business will be personally liable for the entirety of the business. Any claims against the person will be uh, against the business will be against the person. The person will have to pocket out everything from his personal proceeds if there is a case of liability. But then the advantage of a legal entity or a juristic person, Shahara, is now for example, say I pass away in our trading business. So, then our partnership comes to an end. But with a company, the actors of the company can come and go the directors can come and they can leave. Shareholders can come, they can transfer their shares and they can go. But the corporate entity will continue in perpetuity. So, that is another advantage. The goodwill which is accrued to the corporation or the business will also continue with the business. People can exit from companies when they want to, but with the partnership, because it is the, the, the identity of the partners are within the arrangement of the partners, you cannot uh, have that form of continuity like in the form of a company. And also, um, imagine the, the bicycle boutique which yes. we want to open yes. is, um, and we decide to open it up as a company. Yes. What would be the procedure if, if a person, if um, one of our viewers want to start up a company on, on his own, what would be the procedure and what considerations should he make before uh, opening, I mean, setting up a company? So, if a client comes to me and uh, poses the same question you did, uh, I would firstly ask them, or you and I, in this example, we'll have to decide how much of ownership we are going to have in respect to the company. Whether it's going to be 50-50 or you might be the expert in bicycles, you might infuse more capital into the business you might want a 75 percent stake of the company. So, you will have 75 percent shareholding, I will have 25 percent shareholding. So, we would be shareholders. Then thereafter, we would have to also come up with a name. So, we might have to decide on whether we are going to call it 
bicycle boutique or Bauda Lokamavata bicycle boutique or whatever, we decide on a name for the company can be bicycle boutique private limited. We go to the registrar of companies which is uh, uh, on in Colombo 10 and we can seek to first see whether our name is available. So, we do a search. I believe now the registrar of company website permits or entails the ability of a search to be effected even online right now. So, we so it can be done online yes. or physically at, physically the, office at the office in the office, Yes. So, we decide on our name first. So, once we decide on our name, now we have already decided on how much we are going to own uh, the, uh, no, our, our respective stakes. Then we will have to have the constitution of the company that is called the articles of association or that is very important. The articles of association I say is the most in important instrument to be able to regulate the affairs between you and me who are the shareholders and also the affairs of the company and also if we decide to bring in separate people to be on the board of the company as directors, all of us will be bound by this single constitution which is called the Articles of Association. Now, in practice what we generally do is in the Companies Act, there is a model set of articles towards the end of the Companies Act. So, we can decide to adapt the model articles. However, we might also want to customize our articles according to the nature of our arrangement. You, Shahara, might be traveling all over the world. I might be here in Sri Lanka. We might have to decide on how we are going to have a meeting of the Board of Directors. We can provide in the articles that the board meeting can be held via Skype. There is no requirement where you need to be there in person. Board meeting has to be noticed via an SMS uh, giving one day's notice and it can be convened via Skype. So, those matters can be customized. These are the matters why I am being very specific in these matters, Shahara. These are the matters which are disputed ultimately in a court of law. You know, one person wants to put the other director out and they convene a meeting when they, they wait till that director goes out of the country and the article say if the director is out of the country you don't need to notice him. So, then the meeting is convened, whatever steps can be done without that director even requiring to be there or his consent being obtained. So, matters such as that, then how much of dividends, director remuneration, all those matters, profits, how they are going to be distributed, we can agree on all of that in respect of our articles. Then also we can also, and now Shahara you might have your son and one day you might have to want him to bring him into the company. I might want to bring my son into the company. So, we can also address those matters. How can you give your share? Can you give your share to a total outside out of your 75 percent shareholding? You suddenly get uh, friendly with somebody who is a third party in our arrangement and I might not want him to be a part of this company. So, that is called a preemptive right sometimes or you might have to offer that share to me if you are intending to exit, we can provide that in the articles. So, all most things can be uh, 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 foreseen and addressed at the time of incorporating a company which is unfortunately not the case in Sri Lanka. People come, they want a company set up, they, there are people there are you know who will do this overnight, have a set of model articles, get the people to sign, that will be submitted, shares will be just decided and then everything is done and filed and then the registrar of companies will issue the birth certificate of the company that is called the certificate of incorporation. After that then for a little while everything is very peachy, but then when issues come, you suddenly go back to the constitution, then only you get your lawyers to read the constitution. So, then you see, ah, he could have had the board meeting. We have agreed that board meetings can be held in this way. We have agreed that a shareholder meeting can be noticed even with a one day notice. So, those sort of scenarios are best to be addressed at the point of incorporation itself. And also, uh, when we talk about shareholders, now we see different companies where sometimes you get a few shareholders and sometimes companies have hundreds or thousands of shareholders. And um, I can go to the Colombo Stock Exchange and buy shares of any company I prefer. What rights do I have if I purchase shares of a particular company, let's say a, a, a public limited company which is a, a, a very popular name in Sri Lanka and I purchase shares, what rights do I have over that company? 
So, the shareholders rights are set out in section 49 of the Companies Act. One of the important rights is the right to vote, right to vote at a shareholder meeting. It can be at an annual general meeting which is co compelled in law to be held every year and it can also be an extraordinary general meeting which is convened on certain uh, instances which require shareholder approval. So, i.e. in a situation where the board is not empowered to decide on certain matters. It can be where the company decides to amend its own articles. So, the Companies Act in Sri Lanka says that can only be done by way of a special resolution. So, a special resolution in law is a 75 percent uh, uh, requirement of shareholder voting. So, then that is that might be an EGM which is convened. So, the shareholders can go and vote that is their first right. So, that is why you know most of these public quoted companies they would they would have their AGM in a in a very uh, 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 hospitable manner to keep the shareholders happy. There will be a, there'll be a lot of uh, food and drink at the AGM and they want the AGM to conclude as fast as possible. They do not want objections of shareholders being placed at the AGM because one shareholder, one disgruntled shareholder can attend the AGM, put his hand up and say why is this conducted in this way. So, the entire board who is sitting in front of you might have to answer. And then his question might convince a few other shareholders also uh, and raise concerns of, on the administration or the management of the company. So, that can preclude the financial uh, accounts of that year being approved. So, shareholders though you might only have about 1 percent or 0.1 percent of the company, even the Companies Act has recognized rights to those shareholders. You can go and file a, a, a restraining, get an restraining order under section 233. There is no even, there is no percentage which is set out under section 233. A shareholder with one share out of a million issued shares of a company can go to court and get an order. So, those sort of rights are there, right to vote and also one might argue, one might question, you might ask me, can a shareholder compel dividends to be paid to him? The dividends is paid out of the profits. The company is managed by its directors. Now, in a complex company, which are listed multinational companies, which we, uh, which we are aware of, they have a very specialized board of directors. The specialized board of directors know very well how to run the company. The shareholders are kept out of the management. Even the Companies Act has very clearly set out the management of the company is to be run by the board of directors. Shareholders are only there to own the company and watch and see and monitor whether the board is actually acting within the framework or the four corners of the articles of association. So, if the shareholders are permitted every day to go to the company registered office and pester on matters, that is also going to hinder the progression of the management. So, that is a boundary is also drawn in the Companies Act as to how much a shareholder can pick. But dividends cannot be sought as a right. It is a dec decision made by the board of directors. They can decide out of the profits of this year, we will give this percentage to the shareholders. The remaining we will uh, use for R and D, research and development. So, the, those are in the context of a complex company. The fact that you get the right to vote, you get the right to attend a AGM or an EGM and also you might you, you if there are profits and the board decides to pay dividends out, you get a right to get the dividends. So, those are the standard set out rights, but if the company is violating articles or the uh, uh, Companies Act, there are separate legal remedies available in the Companies Act such as oppression, mismanagement or derivative actions or even restraining orders which I earlier mentioned. Those are remedies which are available to shareholders. And also that brings me to the next question because you spoke about uh, directors having a huge say in the company's affairs and uh, recently on mainstream media and also on news reports we saw different uh, situations where different directors of companies have mismanaged the property entrusted to them, have engaged in fraud, have engaged in um, different uh, illegal activities through the company. So, what responsibilities does a director have in a company and how can a person hold him accountable for those responsibilities? So, the director's duties have been clearly set out in the 2007 Companies Act. 
that is from 187 to about section 217, the director's duties are set down. So, for example, in our little company, which we discussed about, um, if we need to buy some bicycles, then say the bicycle supplier is your brother-in-law. Your brother-in-law is the supplier of bicycles. So, you have a benefit of that transaction. The bicycles, your brother-in-law might give you some form of incentive if the bicycles are purchased by the company. So, the company act requires you to disclose that. You have to disclose an interest in respect of any transaction. You might have to also, you are compelled to stay out of voting in certain matters if that directly interests you. So, those are those require actually an introspection by the director to conduct himself in a respective manner. But the Companies Act has also criminal provisions, criminal provisions, which if violated, there is criminal sanctions. So, if a director has produced fraudulent audited accounts, I mean a case in before the magistrate court, mm, section 517 of the Companies Act says, if you if uh, fr fraudulent or your financial accounts are ex facie fraudulent, that is an offence and the offence is cast on the board of directors. So, we have named all the directors of the company and now they are before the magistrate court and the criminal uh, system is, has taken over. So, you can invoke the criminal provisions by way of a private plane. So, there are serious sanctions. There are also in, in respect of winding up where a company is unable to pay its debts so or for reasons set out in section 270 of the Companies Act, a company is now in the process of winding up. If the directors have picked and chosen creditors to be settled, when the directors are well aware that the company is insolvent and just about to be, just about to die, those directors can be also criminally prosecuted. The AG, Attorney General's opinion can be sought in terms of section 375. So, these are the, f the Companies Act is the basic law which applies to companies, but if your company is a bank, your, now for example, I, I do not want to mention names of banks, but the banks are also companies, all these banks, commercial banks are companies. So, the Companies Act applies and then also the uh, central banks, uh, uh, monetary boards, regulations in respect of banks also apply. Then, if the bank is listed in the stock market, they, the listing rules apply. Then, the SCC also can control and regulate the so central bank, the SCC, they all control. But our bicycle, little bicycle boutique, it is only the Companies Act which would apply. But if we suddenly decide, like Facebook, our bicycle boutique grows and we start outlets here, there, everywhere, and suddenly people want to buy stakes in our company. Then we start issuing more shares and suddenly in about 15 years, Shahara, you and I decide, no, we will take our bicycle boutique private limited and make it a PLC. So, we want to list it in the share market at that instance. So, then we, these other regulatory regimes might come into play and govern us. And also there is a corporate governance code. That is a voluntary code which is applicable on the companies. So, there are several modalities or mechanisms to check the roles of directors, but ultimately it is the duty of the directors to ensure that they act independently when they are sitting on the board of a company. They should, they should be concerned in respect of the actual progression of the company rather than of personal interests and sometimes interests of even the shareholders company's interest should come first. So, the listed companies have also, they have non, uh, independent non-executive directors, which are compelled, which, which um, are mandatory in terms of the law to have. So, you, your non-executive director is just there doing a supervisory role, monitoring what the executive directors are doing. But liability, if there is uh, allegation and the board is held liable, even the non-executive independent directors are equally liable as the executive directors. And uh, that was um, on the director's duties and uh, with that we would like to wind up today's episode of Law and Order and uh, we had a very fruitful discussion on 
the Companies Act and its provisions and how it affects the rights of directors, how it affects the rights of shareholders, and how it affects citizens in general. And there, therefore, we would like to conclude Law and Order with the hope of meeting you once again next week at the very same time. Thank you very much, Sharon.